What's up everyone, Nukin here, back with another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video. Today I'll be showing you how to participate in territory battles. This is the Hoth Imperial Evasion event. This footage is from yours truly, bright and early at 9am Eastern Time, so there might be a little bit of mistakes. Uh, maybe not enough coffee in the system, but it's phase one, so it should be relatively easy. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel to see more content uh, and share this video with your friends and your guildmates. So we're going to get started here. We're going to hop into phase one. So let's tap that right now. All right, so we made it. So this is Rebel Base. This is a territory in phase one and the only territory in phase one. And on the right, you can see our guild is at two out of three stars currently at 32 million territory points. With a little bit of a boost, uh, we can go up to the max, which is 45.6 million, and then we'll three star it. You can see an activity log of what's been happening, wh who in your guild has been doing what. This is a platoon mission, inside a platoon mission, and basically platoons help you acquire special abilities that will help you in later phases. So here's phase two, the Ion Cannon territory, and phase two, the Overlook territory. So by completing the platoon mission in phase one, we'll get some special abilities in the next phase. So this that special ability is called Rebel Guerrilla Strike. And the way that you acquire that ability is by having your guildmates submit characters to the six different platoons and each platoon has 15 characters you can tap on the character if you don't know the name of it so for example if you're having difficulty seeing if that's a jo which jawa that is you can just tap it like that and basically every platoon has 15 different randomized characters and your guild kind of just assigns uh, characters to different players. Typically you want to assign characters that meet the star requirement but aren't heavily geared because you want to deploy those characters and you want to use those characters that are highly geared in combat missions. Here in the combat missions you can select a light side only team. The only time that you use dark side characters are during the deployment missions. So we're going to use a clone squad for this phase or I should say this particular combat mission because there's another combat mission after this one. And so I picked my Princess Zodi team here. And you want to make sure that you're looking at the boss. The bosses have a green skull on top of their heads and they're called elites, I suppose. And they all, all, they all have different abilities. So the snow trooper bosses will have a different special elite ability than the probe droid, for example, on the right, which could also turn into an elite as well. There's six waves in a combat mission. For every wave that you beat, you successfully get more territory points. So here on the left, there's the Imperial probe droid, and you can see it has a different effect than the previous elite boss. So. Each wave is getting harder to beat as well, so make sure that you're paying attention to that. But it's very it's not very difficult for this particular mission. I think these missions will get harder as we progress in the phases. So wrapping up here on phase four, and you can see we're getting more territory points. We got 144k TP, uh, which actually maybe that's not the best name to call it because it reminds me of TPing someone's house. But uh, yeah, as you can see here, that, that elite just took a onslaught from Cody's 212 attack and an AoE attack from Clone Sergeant. So they're definitely getting tankier here. This is wave five of six. And we're gonna wrap this one up here and onto the final wave. So now we got 211K from that one. So up from 144K. So here's wave six. And we have an elite, the Snow Trooper Ops. I think he's taken two 212s now. We're probably gonna move on to a different character and finish him off with some AOE attacks. Nice, very good. I don't think you wanna let those Imperial, dro in Imperial droids explode on you. I think they'll do a lot of damage if you let them. So make sure that's not happening. 
and uh, not too shabby. This is a gear 11 tank raid princess Zodi team. It's modded for the tank raid, so that means we have offense arrows, offense crosses. They're not running super fast, and my Cody is actually modded really poorly, and he's actually only gear 10, so not that difficult at all. You can see they basically have full protection, and they ace this pretty easily, so 291k territory points for this combat mission. Very good. All right, so we just completed combat mission one, and as you can see here, the team that we used is grayed out. So since we used that team, we're unable to use them again. So we're gonna have to use a different set of characters that meet the requirements for this combat mission. As long as you have a light side two-star character, they meet the requirements here. So we're gonna pick a rebel squad and go with a Commander Luke lead with Wedge, Biggs, R2, and our trusty old faithful General Kenobi. So I think this team is actually stronger because they have a hero for one. Uh, there's five heroes in this territory battle. There's Commander Luke, there's Captain Han Solo, there's Rebel Officer Leia Organa, Rolo, and the Hoth Bros, Scout and Soldier. Now, the heroes get the last stand buff, which the first time this unit is defeated, it is revived with offense up, advantage up, and the last stand unique debuff for two turns. And basically, last stand means that they will be defeated in two turns unless an enemy is defeated or the encounter ends. So... I, they can basically dispel the buff if, if they can defeat an enemy. And all rebel characters themselves, whether they're a hero or not, uh, basically get protection up for a 30% amount for two turns if they use a special ability and no enemies were defeated on that turn. So the combination of being a hero and a rebel makes you really strong in territory battles. Uh, this was pretty interesting. There were two elites on this round, so I, I didn't think I faced that. Uh, oops, get that out of the way. <laughs> um, shout out to people that know how to draw well on an iPhone. I am not one of those people. Okay, so yeah, there were two elites on this phase, and um, yeah, I, I didn't know that, that that was a possibility, so that didn't happen in the first one. I'm not sure if that's due to RNG. We'll have to do some more to find out. And we're wrapping up this phase here. Alright, and here's the final counter. Just one elite this time. And they're much tougher than the previous guys. I'm not sure if that's because the damage output's not as high. I think it's about the same as the clone team because we are running a tank here and even though Fives was a tank on the other team, he's basically modded as an attacker. This team is pretty counter heavy which is nice. There's a lot of anti-Empire synergy as well with uh, Biggs and Wedge there. But not too shabby, we're going to do an assist attack. Take him out. There, he's gonna die from uh, counterattacks. The other guy died from the burning from R2. And there we go. Another 291k territory points. So pretty nice, pretty easy phase one clear right there. So keep in mind there were no special missions on this territory. You want to do those first before the combat missions. Once all the special and combat missions are done, you will move to the deployment area where you will deploy your entire roster. This is where you get some value from your dark side characters. Make sure that you're leveling up every character that you have. Get their stars up, level them up to at least 50 to 60. Put mods on them, upgrade their abilities. That'll increase their galactic power. So when you deploy, it's that much higher. And then we're going to deploy right here. And boom, all the way up to 36 million. So very good right there. So we're going to start wrapping up this video. This has kind of been a basic tutorial of 
how to tackle territory battles. This was phase one, so it wasn't terribly difficult, but the same sort of simple process is what you want to do in the next territories. So until next time, hope you got something out of this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Bye.